Omar here, and I think it's time we revisited the Fujifilm X-S10. Now, I actually reviewed this camera before. Fujifilm was nice enough to send it to me for a couple of days, and that's the problem. I only had it for a couple of days. So this video is sponsored by Mo Morales. That's right, my best friend Mo Morales let us play with his Fujifilm X-S10. Now, those of you new to Fujifilm or don't know too much about Fujifilm and are researching cameras, um, this camera is a little different than the usual Fujifilm cameras because the usual Fujifilm cameras kind of emulate film cameras. So this is a Fujifilm X-T3 and it has an ISO dial so you can control your ISO, it has a shutter dial, and most of the lenses have an aperture dial. So this is like the traditional Fujifilm camera. Here's an older one called an X-70 which has again dials on the top. They look like little film cameras. <laughs> so a lot of Fuji fans like their film looking cameras and they like the dials. So your perception of this may be a little skewed if you're a fan of all those dials and buttons and things because this guy has two blank, <laughs> you know, dials and the traditional PASAM program mode, shutter mode, aperture mode, and manual. Now, personally, when I shoot Fujifilm, I actually like the ones with the dials because it's sort of like a tactile thing and it's you sort of enjoy doing photography a little bit more. With the Fujifilm X-S10, I actually love shooting this camera in a very automatic mode. And that's what I found the most fun that I could just put it on a semi-automatic mode or full automatic mode and just shoot. So the first thing to think about with this camera is styling. Are you okay with it not really following the traditional Fujifilm look? And if you are okay with this like mini DSLR looking camera, then awesome. You're not a shallow person like the rest of us. Okay, let me give you positives, neutrals, like they're not deal breakers, and my least favorite things about the camera. So which one do you wanna do first? Hmm. All right, so let's start with the positives. The positives, the number one positive of this camera that I had the most fun with was the video and image stabilization. I honestly feel that any camera that I purchase moving on, and I have way too many cameras already, has to have image stabilization. Because if you're traveling or if you're making YouTube videos like me, but mostly if you're traveling and wanna grab some video of your family, most of the lenses in the Fujifilm lineup do not have image stabilization. And the IBIS on this camera is really, really, really good. So my favorite thing overall with the Fujifilm X-S10 is while I'm shooting photos, it has a little record button there that's ready to shoot video at any time. So you can adjust your settings for a particular photo and then hit that record button and then quickly grab some footage and then move on to the next attraction because your family, of course, left you behind again. They don't care about your photography. So the number one thing is it's an amazing hybrid camera for photo and video. Two, the grip is completely different than all the other Fujifilm cameras. My favorite camera of all time here is the Fujifilm X-T20. And this one's okay to grip because it's so small and light. So you kind of hold it with two fingers, you put a wrist strap on, uh, but it doesn't have a deep grip. So my second favorite thing is that this guy is just really great to grip. For a small camera, it's awesome. Another bonus of the X-S10, but I didn't really take advantage of it, is it has the newest film simulations, um, like for example, Classic Neg is one of them. Now, Fujifilm used to release firmware updates that would give people like new film simulations. They don't seem to be doing that anymore. So you have to purchase the new cameras to get the new film simulations. Now, I didn't take advantage of it because I shoot mostly in Provia. That's like the general, uh, you know, film simulation, or sometimes pro neg standard high thingy -um above. It of course takes gorgeous photos, 26 megapixels of beauty. 
great colors on this camera, great skin tones. All right, another positive on the controls is this rear dial. Like most Fujifilm dials are kind of wimpy. Like even on the X-T3, which is kind of like a flagshipy camera, it has this, this rear dial that's tiny and sometimes it's hard to turn. Um, and I don't like using the rear dial or the front dial to change any of my settings. But on the XS10, you have to use the dials because you're not really like uh, changing your shutter speed. You have to use this. And it's nice, listen. Ah, uh, you like? <laughs> this rear dial is as good as my Nikon Z6-2's dial. It just feels smooth and really, really, really nice. All right, neutrals that are not deal breakers after using the XS10 for a little while. The screen, I kind of have come to terms with a flippy screen that if it's on a camera, I'm just gonna live with it. And even when I was out there shooting it one day, it was so bright and sunny out that I loved just kind of closing the screen like this, which protects the camera, first of all, and just using the EVF, which is my next neutral, but not a deal breaker, is the EVF is a little small and cramped, but I'd rather have that than no EVF. And the other not to deal breaker, but a little strange is having the PSMA dial when you have a lens that has no aperture ring. A couple of Fujifilm lenses don't have an aperture ring. This is one of them, this first of generation 27 millimeter 2.8. I love this lens. Look how awesome this is for street. But the problem is if you shoot aperture priority, well, you have to use your dial to sort of change your aperture, fine. But if you go to shutter priority, the dial changes. It's like a strange thing. It, it doesn't have, since this doesn't have the aperture ring, it will flip the dials around. So you, I'm always kind of like, which dial is now? Oh, I'm in shutter priority. And then when you're in manual, this one works and the back one works. And then only one will work when you're in like shutter aperture. Oh my. One thing I couldn't get used to, but not a deal breaker is having the Q button on the top. If you have all the other Fujifilm cameras, I mean, the Q button is right on the back as it should be, I feel, because it's the quick, the quick button, Q, it's right there. You always know where it is, you always touch it. And I love on the X-T3 that it's right above here, right above the joystick. Your finger's kind of always on that joystick and you can just hit the Q menu. Here, there's, it's just kind of strange. There's one time I thought I was hitting the Q menu and I started recording a movie. So I think this is something that maybe becomes muscle memory, but the Q, it's not that quick anymore. All right, and the full blown out negatives, people. This is true hate here. <laughs> Just kidding. This one actually Mo brought up when he's like, this is a little strange and I agree with him. The two buttons on the back, these two right here, they are so flush to the camera. They're like really smooth. And that was becoming a little bit of a deal breaker because on Fujifilm cameras, most of the buttons kind of stick up a little bit and you can feel where they are. So that's the number one negative, these flush buttons here. The second big negative I couldn't get used to is not having the uh, focus mode switch on the front. So that's this little guy, which is on most Fujifilm cameras. You can go from a single shot to continuous to manual. And this camera doesn't have it. And uh, I love going from single shot to, if I see something coming, I can switch to continuous. And I kept, sorry, Mo, I kept trying to go to continuous. I'd have to dive into the quick menu and switch it that way. So that was a little bit of a bummer. I'm sure you can program it to be one of these dials or buttons, but um, yeah. I kind of got used to navigating through the menu with the little joystick. There is no D-pad on here. A D-pad is this little directional pad that's here. So I kind of got used to using the joystick a little bit, but I just found that if you're gonna have a joystick, my recommendation is to have it be like the best joystick ever. This little nipply kind of small, eh, eh, almost a deal breaker. I said you can get used to it, but um, I mean, do I have another camera with a good joystick? Yes. Okay, here's the one on the, you know, the Canon 5D Mark IV. That's a really big camera though. And here's the one on the, uh, the Nikon Z6 II. And that would totally fit on this camera. I mean, there's just so much room on there. I don't understand why Fujifilm puts like the tiniest little joystick. Anyway, it's a deal breaker. Okay, I reported this in my first review, but still was kind of annoying. Uh, 
turning the camera on and off, like the on off switch does not match all the other Fujifilm cameras I own. So it's a little stiff, which is kind of annoying. Now, one of the coolest features on most Fujifilm cameras is you're, you're able to push in or zoom in on the camera by pushing in the rear dial, but that this camera doesn't have that. So you have to program either the rear joystick or another custom button to zoom in so you can manually focus or check focus. It's kind of sad, these rear dials on the back, you can spin them, but they also are an extra button and you don't have that on this camera. And I'm saying the last one is not a deal breaker, but it's still a little sad, a little sad negative is the camera's autofocus is still so behind all the other cameras. This camera still sees faces when there aren't any faces, you know? I'll have, you have to turn face detection off or the camera's always looking for a face and it finds a face and like the shadows and the, ah, oh, it's so annoying. So I'm always turning, you know, face detection off and on. And autofocus in the Fujifilm cameras is still very like lens dependent. Some lenses are faster than others. Some are older than others. So it's not like overly consistent like you have on all the other systems that are like pushing the autofocus like in insane ways. And Fujifilm still, still is kind of like All right, let's show you something over there. And let's show me, 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 me. There you go, good boy. Right, so Mo, should you keep the XS10? You probably won't anyway, no matter what I say, but yes, the XS10 is an awesome little hybrid camera for street, for video, uh, and I love it. So uh, d despite the shortcomings, it's an excellent travel, vloggy sort of street camera. All right, I'll see you guys next time. It's okay, what about over there? You like that? You like that over there? What about me? <laughs> All right, so that's better. Best thing about this camera is this IBIS. Image stabilization in a little body. Looks great. Looks like I have a horn coming out of my... Look at that. I got two horns.